All hail, great master. Grave, sir? Hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel, and all his quality. Hi, that was Ariel, and I'm Jordan, and I'm here to be your bartending guide to Shakespeare. And no, this isn't going to be some long lecture about the bard himself, nor will this segment encapsulate all the wonder and beauty of a live theatrical performance, but I'm hoping by the end of this, Shakespeare won't be so intimidating. Heck, here I am performing at a mock bar in my college bedroom. It couldn't be less formal than this. Oh, and by the end of today, you'll also learn how to make one of the most magical cocktails around. Welcome to All the World's a Cocktail. Now, let's get into it. Today we'll be covering Ariel from The Tempest. You already heard a segment of the monologue we'll be covering today, so congrats! You made first contact with Shakespeare. See, that wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> Why The Tempest? Because it was believed to be Shakespeare's last production he ever wrote? Because the current political climate of our nation today is much like a tempest itself without a light in the tunnel? <laughs> We won't get into that today. No, I chose The Tempest because it was the first production of Shakespeare that I actually enjoyed and understood. It was during my freshman year of college. I'd seen Shakespeare before, but I hated it. Wait, what? You're going into acting as a profession without actually liking one of the core parts of the career? I know. But it all changed when I saw the University of Evansville's production of The Tempest. It wasn't a show with monologuing in words I couldn't understand, with characters I didn't know. No, The Tempest had action, mythical creatures, and magic. It made me want to get on stage with the performers and join in the adventure. Here's a man, Prospero, who's been stranded on an island for 12 years with only his daughter and the island's native inhabitants as company. Over the time he's stuck, he gains the ability of magic. Think Neverland. But you're an adult, definitely aging, without any mermaids or lost boys or fun. <laughs> Though you do have a magical companion who likes playing tricks and performing all sorts of magical tasks for you. Tinkerbell, meet Ariel, not the mermaid, but a magical mythical creature who monologues. Anywho, when the men who stranded Prospero for 12 years pass by the island, of course he has to play some tricks on them. The play starts with Prospero creating a tempest on the sea and sending Ariel to get the men to jump boat and swim to shore. He comes back to tell his tales of triumph in a monologue that we briefly saw in the beginning and we'll see throughout this video. In the monologue, he describes himself as flamed amazement, which just so happens to be the name of our cocktail today, Ariel's flamed amazement. Now, what goes into a cocktail that's supposed to embody the fury of a tempest, the amazement of fire, and the magic of Ariel? Well, let's find out. The recipe. The ingredients we'll be using today are the juice of tropical kiwis and limes, mint leaves for a cooling sensation, simple syrup, crushed ice and magic ice, luster dust, aka edible glitter, ground cinnamon, a passion fruit liqueur, today I'll be using Pessoa, a high proof rum, today I'll be using Crisan 137 proof hurricane rum, and the piece de resistance the Butterfly Pea Flower Infused Vodka. When acidity is added, it has color changing properties. For our purposes today, I'll be infusing it with vodka, which will create a deep blue color. To infuse your vodka, add 10 to 12 dried butterfly pea flowers to one cup of vodka and set in the fridge overnight. In a shot glass, take one and a half jiggers of your butterfly pea flower vodka and pour it in. To add in the magic arrow, we'll be adding in luster dust. Now luster dust is edible glitter. I'll be adding a small amount to our shot glass. Watch closely as when swirled, we create a very fantastic spectacle. To really see the magic of Ariel, we're going to see this change from a dark blue to a purpley pink color. Take a small amount of lime juice and add it to your shot glass. Now we see the color changing properties of Ariel. So, what's next? Well, we can't have Ariel's flamed amazement without a little bit of fire. Fun fact, 
The character of Ariel is loosely based off of a tale from 1609, where a group of sailors got into a shipwreck, with many of their ships being destroyed or beached or severely damaged. In the tale, the sailors describe seeing a little apparition of a round light, like a faint star, shining and streaming along with a sparkling blaze. So today, this is our little apparition of a little round light. Now here's the part where things get tricky. We'll be taking our Krizan 137 proof rum and adding it to our shot glass. We'll only be adding a little bit because 137 proof is very, very high and very flammable. So, take a spoon, turn it over, and create a small layer on top. What's next? We light her on fire. Now, what did it say again? Sparkling blaze? Watch this. I boarded the king's ship. Now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I divide and burn in many places. On the topmast yards and bows for it would I flame distinctly and then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, the fire and roars of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. Now we take the juice of a kiwi, about one fourth ounce of lime juice, then we take our mint. Don't forget to spank the mint. Now that I've spanked the mint, I'll be adding 10 leaves. Next, add your sugar of choice. Today I'll be using simple syrup, which is a one to one ratio of sugar and water. I'll be using a half ounce of simple syrup. Muddling is breaking down the ingredients so that they combine together. Essentially, it's just fancy squishing. Now, I don't have a muddler, so I'm just going to use the back of this wooden handle. Now, we combine them all together. You can use any glass of choice, but I chose a longer glass so that you can see the colors throughout our cocktail today. In our cocktail, we'll take some crushed ice, and our magic ice. Magic ice is just water that's been fused with the butterfly pea flour and frozen overnight. Now we really get to see our cocktail shine. Take your muddled ingredients and pour them over the ice. Note the color changing properties already. And we'll add our shot of rum and lime juice. And for one final oomph, we're going to be adding the passion fruit liqueur, which is the red liqueur. And just top it off with one ounce. Stir it all together. For our foaming bride day, we'll be adding club soda. But felt a fever of the mad and played tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Finally, to top off our cocktail, we have to garnish it. For the garnish day, we'll be using a cocktail stick, a lime, and a kiwi. Cut your lime and create a small lime wheel with it. And do the same with your kiwi. With your kiwi, slice it in half and twist it, creating this little S shape. To finish it off, we'll add our mint, which kind of looks like hair. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair up staring like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped and cried, hell is empty and all the devils are here. Not a hair perished. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bades me in troops, I've dispersed them throughout the aisle. Cheers. See? Like the mariners in that story, you arrived at the end of a Shakespeare monologue completely unscathed and fresher in the mind and the mouth than before. I hope the next time you come across Shakespeare, it won't be so intimidating and you'll remember the fun we had here today. This has been All the World's a Cocktail. Now, a Jew, a Jew, a Jew. Oh, you thought I was done? Of course, we have to do a bonus round. Midsummer Night's Dream. Though she be little, she be fierce. Drink safely, y'all.